Hello, it's Holly. I have been working on some, um, uh, well, I've been working on this. This has been ongoing for about, I guess you could say about two months. Uh, the Lord has been revealing so much. Um, with that said, he's also been having me retain most of the things that he's been saying to a certain time. And now is the time to actually release what he has been giving me. What he's been pouring out to me, I'm pouring back out for everyone. So, this presentation is going to be on the number eight and its representation to many different things that it speaks about or that the Spirit has been showing me about number eight and a reference to metamorphosis and also the letter H. So, in this first slide, which is the title, um, the beginning of my presentation, you see on the left-hand side, it is a representation of um, the process of, through metamorphosis, from the caterpillar to the butterfly. Um, and let me just say real quickly, um, when I began my walk with the Spirit, one of the first things that happened to me is that I did a lot of research and a lot of things that I was researching, everything, well I can't say everything, but half of the things that I was researching and then the other half were two totally different opposites. Um, what I mean by that is the things that I was learning at the beginning of my walk had to do with the, the um, I guess you could say the, the negative or the bad things that were happening in our world. I concentrated solely on the negative at the beginning of my walk and now I understand that that was the process that I had to go through in order to get where I am right now or where the Spirit took me or is taking me, should I say, because it's a continuous process. Um, he can, we continue to learn from what the Holy Spirit gives us and fills us with every single day. Um, and everything happens for this purpose, his purpose. So, um, so when I before researched about um, some of the things the Spirit would show me, I would land on some of the pages where the owner of the page would make videos about, let's say, the monarch butterfly and how it's associated with the devil and um, the beast. Um, how it was associated with the devil, and with the latter of what I just said being true, the beast um, associated with the devil, it, it, it's definitely true, but um, the way that I see things now is completely, completely different. And the reason why I see things completely different now, why most of us see things completely different now, is because they're we've gone through the three days or you can say that we've gone through the seven days and he's brought us to our eighth day and what takes place in our eighth day is not seen by anyone unless they've gone through the eighth day um, and before I got to my eighth day I believed anybody and everybody um, that led me on this journey because I thought that it was the Holy Spirit and in a sense, it was the Holy Spirit, but on the same token, I was listening to man, the created, versus the creator um, in the beginning. And I got sidetracked. And the process of me morphing into what I'm supposed to be was derailed. It was derailed by man. Um, when I started to just listen to the Holy Spirit alone and let no one teach me is when I began seeing light. Um, so with that said, what I'm going to show you in this video is not any way associated with the devil or with um, some made up form. God created everything in this world. He even created the devil. 
So there is a purpose and a reason and a rhyme that he created the devil and he created us and everything that takes place. So um, we're going to talk about that in this video presentation. So let me go on to my next slide. And this is a picture or an image depicting the great divide. Um, in his holy word, he talks about um, you need to be cold or hot, um, no lukewarm. So to me, that lukewarmness is the divide going, splitting everything in two. Okay, we there is a reason for the two parts. Um, and we're going to see what that reason is. But when we only see the light or if we're only seeing the darkness, then we're not there yet, in a sense. Um, in order for us to be at the top of the peak or the top of the mountain, Mount Zion, um, New Jerusalem, New Heaven, New Earth, in order for us to see the top or the overall picture, uh, we need to bring the two parts together and make them become one. So, how do we do that? Or, how does the Spirit teach us to do that? Okay, and that's, those are some of the questions that we're going to be talking about. So, again, you have your great divide. What takes place in this great divide? Well, the divide is what keeps us limited. If we're only seeing parts, then we're not seeing the whole picture. And why aren't we seeing this whole picture? Okay, so let's take a look at the parts that makes the whole. So when you see this image right here, you have black and you have white. Could you tell me how these two colors represent two different parts? Think about your brain. Your brain is divided. We have a left brain and we have a right brain. And our left brain is made to do certain things. And our right brain, same thing. But the left side of our brain and the right side of our brain are two totally different poles. A negative and a positive, you can say. Um, but when those two poles come together, then there's unity and there's growth, and there's circumcision. Um, and when I speak about circumcision, I'm speaking about circumcision in the spirit. It is not taking a newly born child and circumcising his genital area within a boy. Even though that is called circumcision, that's called circumcision in the world that we live in. It is not speaking about the circumcision in the spirit. In the spirit, being circumcised on the eighth day means that um, we, we are able to see, we are able to hear, we are able to speak what the spirit is telling us. So circumcision of the eighth day in the spirit is being made whole by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Um, so let's take a look at some of the... Um, features of our left brain and our right brain and see the difference and why the people want to keep us divided. And when I say the people, it's the evil people in the world. Um, right brain functions, and his word speaks about right brain, or I'm sorry, not right brain, it doesn't say right brain, but in the Bible it speaks, okay, the King James Bible, it speaks a lot about right, right, right. He uses it referenced as his right hand and the right side. Um, so I want you to think about some of those verses that you that you know, um, and also do do a a Bible search after we get done and see how this represents the two parts. What I'm speaking about. So with our right brain, we're more apt to use our feelings. Um, right brain functions. We see the whole picture. Um, we use our imagination to um, show us things. It's the imagination rules. Symbols. We use symbols a lot. Pictures, images. Um, right brain thinkers, they usually use, they think about the present and they think in terms of in the future. Um, they have a philosophy or a certain type of religion, which 
I'm a strong believer in, I don't believe in religion. I believe in Christ. I believe in God. But um, I'm a part of no religion. I believe that God made everything, so therefore, he is everything. Um, they're, most right brain believers are believers. They appreciate things. They have spatial perception. They see space. Um, my husband and I, it's so funny because when we would rearrange our furniture, he would say, it, it's not, our piece, whatever furniture we're moving, he'd say, it, it doesn't fit there. It's not going to fit there. Um, but I'm, just by looking at something, I could tell, um, without even measuring it, whether it would or it wouldn't. And because I believe that I saw the whole picture, I visualized it and I put it there and I, I, I've always been right in that aspect, so uh, I thought it was pretty cool that I was able to see and perceive my perception in terms of being able to see if it could fit. Um, risk-taking, right brain thinkers are risk-takers. Um, instead of saying or believing that they can't do something, they're going to try it. And if one way doesn't work, then they're going to try it another way. Okay, and... You can see, we're going to talk about some more features, but I want to move on to our left brain functions. Um, these are your analytical thinkers. Um, they use numbers a lot, facts, rules, detail-oriented. They go from the part, part, whole, versus the right brain learners. They go from the whole, part, part. Um, left brain functions are math and science, and they're in the present, but they concentrate on the past versus the future. Um, they can comprehend, they can think, they, um, they, have to, they have to know why something happens before they're going to believe it. Um, when the right brain appreciates something, the left brain type of people, they acknowledge it. They, they don't have an appreciation for it. They just they say, okay, that's what it is. Um, left brain functions have order and pattern that they see in and they they know an object's name but your right brain people are going to know the function of that name like they see it in their mind like happening instead of just the name they see it um, the left brain functions are reality based they live in the reality um, versus right brain functions, they live in the fantasy, they, they picture it and they see it and they live it. And um, left brain functions are form strategies and strategies are parts of how they're going to solve something. Um, let's do it this way and then do it this way and then let's end with this way. Whereas the right brain functions, um, they're going to see possibilities. If it doesn't work this way, then we're going to try this. But they're they're pulling it all together. I mean, I'm sorry, pulling it all in and then actually working it out. Um, left brain functions are practical and they're safe. They again don't like to take that risk taking. Okay. Um, let's see. Here's another image for those of you that like images and um, this to me would be more of a picture that I would like versus the one that we, you just saw because it has color and it has um, different fonts which I like it has a couple more images on the side but the left brain person would prefer the previous picture that I showed because it was factual and just presented the ideas and and you can see right here up oh, well I pressed the button I didn't mean to let me pull that back. I know that you're going to see the other side, but that's all right. We'll come back to it. Um, you have um, decisive, logic, accurate, analytical. They reason. They're practical. They're strategic. They have to have control um, and science, realistic. And then you have your right brain. Look at all the color. I love color. You have peace and yearning, creative, vivid, passion, freedom. Um, these are your poetry and your art majors and um, just things that like, or I'm sorry, not things, but people that like to create. Um, intuitive. They see things happening before they happen. Okay. Um, and then we have one more image that I wanted you to see. This is probably my more favorite um, 
image out of all three because this is completely shown with some words but mainly images um, and so that will show you right there images you got your camera which I used to be a photographer I owned my own business um, went back to teaching so when I teach my students this is how I like to teach them just like I'm showing you I like to show images and um, symbols and I use my imagination I have them use their imagination to solve problems um, spatial uh, we live in the present but I also teach about future I help I help them connect things um, how they're going to use math or reading or science and how they're going to use it in the future and how would they use it and a lot of times I use my feelings and pull up feelings from them to teach and to help them remember um, this way of teaching is associated with right brain thinkers so in my class if I have right brain students then they're going to perceive and learn from the way that I teach whereas if I have some left brain thinkers they might not like the way that I teach and they want more just give it to me like this give it to me and show me how it is and that's it that's you know they read and they 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 have to do it themselves um, with numbers and with science and they see patterns they use logic and they use um, strategy to solve uh, problems they again they like the past which it is true we learn from the past but um, it's just it's just two different ways to see the divide and this is exactly what the Holy Spirit has been showing me about the divide and how we see things and how we associate um, this spirit with the world okay um, a lot of you know that I um, definitely have experienced something in my life when all this began I had a vision of um, 28 the number 28 or 2 and the number 8 and later on the Lord showed me that it was 2 8 as in 2 W O 8 88 um, and I believe that it was all for well I know that it was all for this reason it was showing me about the eighth day um, and, it, and I've used those two numbers to get me here he knew it he, he knew that if he gave me something that I would continue and continue on until I figured out what it meant because it was so powerful when it happened but um, I want you to think about the butterfly effect um, so the butterfly effect is this happens over here so it affects what happens over here um, if you can possibly visualize that for a second and then I want you to also look at this butterfly right here this is even though there's two different butterfly pictures on this image or this screen it is the same butterfly um, and the way it's the same butterfly is that the ventral view or the underneath which he was showing me understand with this image um, the underneath of this butterfly is red and white and black and you have the number 88 this is this is real this isn't I didn't insert or um, use Photoshop to put 88 on this butterfly it, it that's just how it is that's how God made it um, and the dorsal or the back side of this butterfly is black so you have um, this butterfly that's complete opposite on one side versus the other and um, this is a and I, I hope I'm not going to butcher this too bad but the Dystheria salmina butterfly and it's a part of the Nymphialide the family or the Borbolida 88 is what it's called so um, he led me here and I know why because he was wanting me to see the opposites or the two sides or the two two ways of looking at things your right brain your left brain so um, with this intact I want to go on and show you that um, let's think about some of the the two opposite poles and so if we have on this side off sleep dead evil work sick fool left what would we have on the opposite side well 
off, you would have on. Sleep, you would have awake. Dead, you would have alive. Evil, you would have good. Work, you would have rest. Six, I'm going to talk more about six in a minute. But then you have seven, which is opposite. You can even add eight on this side with the seven, seven and eight. Um, so let me talk about that for a second. Um, back, well, it's been a little over two years that all this has happened to me. And for 36 years, I was walking in days one through six. Because um, 36 years I lived without the spirit teaching me and talking to me and showing me things. So I worked for 36 years. And I, don't, I can't tell you which day was one and which day was two and so forth, but I can tell you that days one through six, I lived in for 36 years because I was without rest um, in the spirit. I, I didn't have rest. I, I was dead. I was dead to the spirit and um, didn't know the spirit and didn't know false from truth. Um, so when all this took place, I finally had rest. When the Holy Spirit filled me, I I learned what rest was, and it was resting from the person that I used to be. So um, he gave me rest, and he showed me that there's a way to be, and there's a way not to be, and there's a way to be off, and there's a way to be on, and there's a way to sleep, and there's a way to be awake. And when I say sleep, I'm not talking about laying in the bed and waking up in the morning. It's, that's not what I'm speaking about in the spirit. In the spirit, it's being asleep, not knowing the spirit. Being dead is not knowing the spirit. Um, doing evil versus doing good is being dead or without the spirit. Um, a fool is someone who's dead. Uh, to be wise and to gain wisdom is to contain the spirit. Uh, Job twenty-eight twenty-eight. Again, with the twenty-eight, that that's a very powerful verse that goes directly along with the the divide. Um, in order to figure out how to gain wisdom and understanding, go to Job twenty-eight twenty-eight and ask the Lord to to help you understand that. Um, then you have your left and you have your right. So this is the divide that that is taking place. We do not need to be divided. The Spirit needs to bring us all together. We need to work together. But the way that we work together is in truth and wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Um, so let's go on. This is a little bit more about the 88. It can also be called Anna's 88. Let me see where I had that. Um, these butterflies so funny that they they eat decaying fruit or dung which is animal poop <laughs> um i thought that was kind of funny considering that uh the bible speaks about dung a lot and it also talks about fruit extensively um so in order for us to have fruit and to produce fruit and i'm speaking in the spirit then we need to abide and follow the spirit and the spirit teaches us um, truth. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and, well, the wingspan is about 30 to 40 millimeters. The adults are black and blue band on each wing. The underside is red and white with black stripes that look like an outline number 88. Again, this, this is the same butterfly. This is the dorsal view and your ventral view. When I Saw ventral that reminded me of the heart, which the heart is subdivided into four. Um, you have chambers, and the ventricle in the aorta, just different parts of the heart. So that was another thing he was showing me. Um, and here's another type of butterfly. Uh, this butterfly is, I thought was pretty special because it has reflecting um, this right here. The wings of this butterfly has like a reflectant. Um, you, have you ever seen material where you turn it a certain way and, and it changes colors? This is probably, since everything is adapted after nature um, and animals, you have uh, the same thing that's taking place. And this butterfly is the same kind of material. 
uh, or that's used with this material to create the same effect. And this is the same thing. This is a nymphalite butterfly. And again, you have your blue on the inside. And then this is what shocked me because it was referring to the side of the swing and it was said it was like a dead leaf. Uh, so the outside, or the, I'm sorry, the underside of this butterfly is synonymous with the dead leaf. Okay, representation of the dead tree. Um, another thing I saw with this butterfly, what I thought was really amazing, is you have the great divide. If you have the divide right here, here's the one. Um, again, this is three and three, and then one in the middle is the seven. Reminds me of the, um, the candlestick. Uh, you have, on this side right here, you have the three circles together, which later on you're going to see how I use this a lot, or how he showed me with the three, the two eight that become three parts. And then you have um, this side over here, which you have two circles, which looks like the eight, and then you have one separated from the eight. So I'm going to show you how he's shown me in the past of how to um, bring this all together as far as in our DNA and different things like that. Um, so then Nymphalidae, I think that's how you pronounce it, it's the largest family of butterflies with about 6,000 species distributed throughout the, most of the world. These are usually medium-sized to large butterflies. Um, most species have a reduced pair of four legs, and many hold their colorful wings flat when resting. They are also called brush-footed butterflies, or four-footed butterflies. Um, four is very synonymous in the kingdom. Many species are brightly colored and include popular species such as the emperor's monarch butterflies, um, reminds me of the kingdom, admirals, tortoise shells, and fruitilleries. However, the underwings are in contrast, the underwings are often dull, and in some species look remarkably like dead leaves. Um, or, or uh, they're much paler, producing a cryptic, cryptic, like dead, effect that helps the butterfly disappear in its surroundings, it's like a camouflage. The monarch, um, as I was studying about the monarch butterfly, I came across a video on YouTube and it was talking about monarch butterflies and um, what it brings. It brings on the Day of the Dead. This is what some some people believe um, in Mexico. Um, they believe that the resurrection. It's it's the when the butterflies fly to Mexico and to this certain area that it's a re resurrection from winter and lasts thousands of years. And you can view this video on just type in the monarch butterfly, four wings and a prayer. I thought it was pretty ironic and just went with everything that he was showing me. Um, but I'm leading you to do your own research because in all this, I don't want anyone to follow me and what, what, um, what I'm telling you, I want you to follow your own spirit. Um, so if you want to do that, go ahead. This right here, um, I want you to look at it for a second, and of course it's the alphabet, but I'm sure most of you may know or may not know that the letters that you see before you are letters that are not photoshopped again, but they are actually imprinted on the wings of butterflies. Um, you cannot tell me that the Lord is absolutely amazing with things like this. So it just goes to show you that the creator is absolutely amazing and that there is he can use anything and everything to communicate with us. And he is. Um so then I want you to look at two different metamorphous um functions or different ways that metamorphosis takes place. You have your complete metamorphosis, and then you have your incomplete metamorphosis. Um, the complete metamorphosis is when you have an animal that goes um, through the process and comes out completely changed. Um, within the cocoon, 
or the butterfly within that cocoon or the caterpillar within that cocoon, um, it is completely um, changed and metamorphed into an another creature. And then with your incomplete metamorphosis, you have what's called um, a nymph, which is the baby stage. And in the childlike or the, the baby nymph stage and it going through its process, it, that nymph looks a certain way and when it becomes the adult and it goes through metamorphosis or the incomplete metamorphosis, it still looks like the creature that it was beforehand. Um, and it's just, it's incomplete. It's, well, I, I'm not saying that their metamorphosis isn't complete. Well, the name suffices that it is an incomplete metamorphosis because it doesn't completely change. Um, and this is representation of the Holy Spirit. Um, prior to actually being filled with the Spirit, I was part of the church, just like many people are, and went up to the altar call and gave my life to Christ and was baptized in water. And But did it change me? Nope, sure didn't. I, I, I wasn't a different creature. I was in an incomplete metamorphosis state. I did exactly the same things I did before I gave my life to Christ. So was I changed? No, I don't think so. I Two years ago when I was crying out to the Lord on uh, all fours and tears in my eyes and pain in my heart and wanting to just completely physically die because of all the pain caused by myself through sin, did I call out to the Lord and Him completely change me then? Absolutely. Does any man in this world have power to change us like God does? Nope. He showed me that that night. And everything that I thought I knew before was absolutely wrong. And it was taught to me by man. Can't. That's not how it works, guys. It's, it just doesn't. So let's talk about the um, the nymph for a second. Um, psychist or a locust, which are spoken about, definitely. Uh, grasshoppers can be a nymph. There are different insects that can be nymphs. Um, so a nymph is the young of an insect that undergoes incomplete metamorphosis, like grasshoppers, termites, ticks, and cockroaches. Nymphs are born with many of the characteristics they will carry into adulthood, unlike moths and butterflies. And like we said, those are complete metamorphosis, but the nymph is part of an incomplete. Um, during a full metamorphosis, the liquefying and reforming with wings in, a, in the pupil stage takes place. Uh, so you have some cyads or locusts, which they're also called, that can go through a cycle and they can live for 13 years underground or they can live for 17 years underground. There's two different types of psychids um, or sci sci uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, guys. Um, but what takes place, um, they lay their eggs. And if you look at one, it says they're laying their eggs. It's a female cyatum lays as many as 600 eggs and then in the second stage you have your nymph stage and about six to ten weeks later eggs hatch into an ant-like nymph which drop to the ground and feed on sap and tree roots. The nymphs live underground for 13 years and then step three is your emerging between late April and May the nymphs tunnel to the surface crawl up on the tree and other structures and shed their shells. And then the process takes place again, where you have the mating. Um, the sides live above ground for about a month when the males produce mating calls to attract females. Um, so it's not a full, it's not a full metamorphosis. So I want you to relate these to what's spoken about in the Bible about your locusts and your grasshoppers and insects and ticks and life and uh, different things like that and apply them to what you see here as far as the complete or the incomplete metamorphosis. Um, oh, I'm going to too far. Let me go back. So then it, I did a research on um, child, child or young animals or different names for what we call the young. Um, then I came across 
an ayah. It is a young nestling, nestling hawk or falcon. Though the word can also indicate a young hawk that has been taken from its nest so that it can be trained for hunting. It was just so plain as day. He was, the Lord would show me that there are eunuchs that are trained and some eunuchs that have been called. Um, just like you have in the church. You have pastors that are trained to be what they are. And then there's some people that are not in the church and are called. So, which one do you believe you should follow more? The one that's been trained to look and act like it's something it's not? Or the ones that have actually been called? And we have to decide where the Spirit resides. His Word teaches us, and the Holy Spirit teaches us, that um, we're to be taught by no man. Only the Spirit can teach us all things, and that it will if we allow him to, and so we're not influenced by anybody else. That's how we know that he's true and right and teaching us. Um, some of the words that came to mind or that he was showing me was sun, solar, circle, and also circum circumcision. I know that we have four blood, blood moons, uh, lunar eclipses, um, that are taking place, and we're right in the middle right now, <laughs> as a matter of fact, right in the middle. Um, things that are taking place have to take place, and they have to take place the way that they're supposed to. So, with that said, um, some questions arise in my mind that I still, for two years, haven't been able to see the correct answer or given the correct answer, and but soon I know that, that they will. One of the questions that I have is, why is man spraying the, the sky? I mean, everyone knows that there's chemtrails. There, there were contrails. They've been uh, spraying the sky since before I was even born. I know this. And, but it's just, there's something different. Uh, for a couple of days now, um, I've noticed where they've been spraying, and they've been spraying directly by the sun. Like they're trying to hide something in there, and I'm just not sure what it is. A lot of, a lot of times, um, I've been seeing these sun dogs, um, and this these sun dogs take place whenever it's cold, freezing cold temperatures are high in the sky, and the way the the sun reflects or refracts through the actual ice crystals gives this effect where there's a glowing around the sun, but I live in uh, the Gulf Coast area. It's not cold here. And why this has been taking place around the sun is beyond me because it's not cold here. And I know that the temperatures get colder as you rise in the sky, but we don't get we don't get snow. We don't get ice crystals. And the times that these are taking place in the summer, in our summer, where we have heat index up to 100 degrees, it's just it's not possible. So, um, I, I'm not saying that it's completely not possible. God it can make everything happen, but I just feel like there are some very unanswered questions going on, and um, we have a right to know. As we live on this world, we live on this planet just like everybody else. No one controls us. No one's over us. We're all the same. Um, and so... Why there's such a takeover or planning, I have no idea. It's, it's just not fair. Um, but enough of that. So we have the things that we've been looking at. We've been looking at part, part. We haven't seen the overall picture yet. But what we've learned is that left brain, um, left brain thinkers use this um, type of functioning to actually figure out, figure out their problem. Part, part to the whole. Whereas if we go from the whole to the part down, we're going to see something totally different. No, we'll actually we'll see, see things the same exact way, but we'll see it in a different light. So, let's see. I want to go over a few verses about circumcision and the Son of God's covenant. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man, child, young, 
child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. We know that the flesh is not where we're supposed to live. But right here, it's, it's talking about the flesh and the spirit, and it's the foreskin, it's, it's part of the skin. And it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man-child in your generation. He that is born in the house or, brought, or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. So, eight days. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Okay? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter whose praise is not of men, but of God. Someone could know every single word in the entire Bible. Does man think that they have the Spirit? Most men think that they have the Spirit if they know the Bible that well. But is it the Spirit? Is it the letter that gives us the Spirit? Nope, it doesn't. So, I'm not saying not to study the Word. Yes, I studied the Word, and that's where it showed me what he was showing me, agreed 100% with what... He was showing me, that's how I tested the Spirit, to see if it was truly Him, because what He was showing me, I would go to the Word and, and find out exactly if it was true, and it was. He was showing me through His Word, and showing me um, in, in my everyday life. It all connected. So, all three concepts of circumcision, baptism, and resurrection come together in Colossians 2.11, where it says, in whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. Let me repeat that. You are circumcised without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. When the Spirit came and entered into me, and my eyes were immediately opened, and I was transformed by the Holy Spirit with inside of me. My brain, or Christ, or the Holy Spirit, whichever you prefer to say, showed me instantly how I had to remain alive. And that was to not sin. When he filled me with the Spirit, he, and he told me, go and sin no more. Who am I? To say that if I sin, that I will not lose what I have. Granted, it has been a journey in the past two years. And for the past two years, I was completely in the wilderness. And I had to learn, just like Paul had to learn, whereas he was in his flesh. But he wanted to be so, so completely in the spirit. And he was talking about how he couldn't do it. And, and you know... Until you get to Romans 8 and it, and it shows you exactly how to do it. You have to have faith and you have to believe that Christ and our Father is more powerful than anything and everything. And with him we can do all things. And yes, that means putting off sin. He puts it off. He puts it out of our mind. When we're tempted, we have to pray and we have to know that we, we don't have to do it. Or for him to not do it, to, to, to keep us from doing it. And, and he does that. And that's how... Um, he's taught me how to walk and how to live a life that I was supposed to live, that all of us are supposed to live. And to come out of religion and to to, to come out of the, the belief and the falsehood of, of that Christ died, Jesus Christ died to completely um, bring us to heaven, even if we have future sin. That's not what it says. That's not what how it happens, and that's not what we're supposed to follow. That's a false religion. It's a false that's a false prophet. Anyone that speaks these words, they're false. And it says buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. It's not of us. We don't do this. We don't we don't keep ourselves from sin. He does it through the transformation of our mind and our heart. And he takes that that temptation out of us. He 
who raised him from the dead. God raised Jesus from the dead, and he's going to raise you from the dead. Each and every individual that believes and has faith that we can come out of sin 100%. If you believe even the size of a mustard seed that he can do this for you, and you truly believe it with all your heart that this can happen, then he will reveal himself, and he will show you how he does it. We, on the other hand, in the seventh day, gain our rest. We don't do it. It's nothing of us. It's all of him. He can and he will do this for each and every one who, who call, calls out for him and asks him to do this for him. Um, and you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, do you see how he's relating? This word is showing you right there. And you, speaking of each of us, we are dead if we're in sin. And if we're in sin and if we're dead, we're, un uncir we're uncircumcised and we're in our flesh. We're not living in the spirit. When you live in the spirit, you become alive and you become circumcised with the whole truth that sin causes death. When you sin, you die or you can remain dead. Not until you gain the spirit will your mind and your heart and everything be completely changed and circumcised and I believe that the inside of me has, I, I, it's changed. My DNA has changed. My blood's changed. My, I, I believe everything's changed. I think that's where you have the, the complete metamorphosis taking place, where the spirit changes you. So, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, happy quick, quicken together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses. So, Everything that you've done before the Spirit, He forgives you. It's it's in the past. Um, he blots it out with the handwriting of ordinance, ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. The cross is where we were. We had to crawl up on our own cross. We have to crawl up on our own cross. We have to die. Not in the physical sense. We have to die spiritually. We have and we house two spirits within us. We have an evil spirit. We have a, a righteous spirit. And the evil spirit has to be nailed on the cross. Yeah. That, that old self, the old person that we were, it has to be nailed to the cross where we were buried with Christ in baptism. We become new Christ. We are the new earth we gain the new heaven which is within our mind we become what we thought was outside of us becomes within us even though we walk on the earth we become the new earth because everything's different our blood our dna or that's just what i believe that's just i mean it's a, it's something that he's shown me in the past and Hopefully, he's going to show this to everyone whenever everyone, each of us, call out for him to completely change us and to kill us. Because death is a good thing. Dying to yourself and what you have been taught by man previously, dying to that and dying to everything you think is right, it's, it's totally different with, with God. It, he teaches you in an instant, in a twinkling of an eye, it says, you're changed. Your your whole brain shifts. I guess from the left brain to the right brain. Um, but then he starts teaching us both sides and showing us that they're both connected and they're all for good. No evil can come from the left nor the right. And good just doesn't come from the right. It also comes from the left. So maybe I'm speaking a little bit further than what I need to be right now. But... Um, when the spirit enters into you, you, you see the whole picture and then you go from the whole to the part. Okay. I'm going to stop right here for a second and come back to you. I just want to make sure this, hopefully this video is going to upload. Um, I know I checked the previous one, but I didn't go this long. So, um, I'm going to come back and in the next video, we're going to, we're going to look at the part and we're going to look at the whole picture and see where we go from there. Um, love you guys. Blessings and love. Completely.
and I will be with you in just a second.